During a career in public service that began 50 years ago this summer, it was my good fortune to lead three very large, uh, very different organizations. As director of Central Intelligence, overseeing the Central Intelligence Agencies and the other 14 intelligence organizations of the American government. As president of Texas A&M University, now the nation's fifth largest, <laughs> and leading the Department of Defense in the middle of two wars with three million people and then an annual budget of nearly $750 billion, the largest and most complex organization on the planet. But my first leadership position was as a patrol leader in Boy Scout Troop 522 in Wichita, Kansas. The only formal leadership or management training I ever had was a Philmont Scout Ranch in what was then known as the National Junior Leader Training Program. How fitting that a life in leadership that began as a Boy Scout patrol leader likely ends as I conclude my term as national president of the Boy Scouts. There's a nice symmetry to closing the circle that way. I assumed the role of president simply because I continue to believe, as I have all my life, that there is no finer program for preparing American boys and young men for leadership than the Boy Scouts of America. And further, I believe that today America needs scouting more than ever in our movements, more than century-long history. In each organization I've led, my goal has always been to make strong institutions even stronger. I cautioned two years ago that if you wanted the status quo, you had surely elected the wrong person. I told you then that we needed to continue improving the volunteer governance of scouting, building on the work of Rex Tillerson and Wayne Perry. And thanks to the hard work of Aubrey Harwell and many others, our governance task force updated and revised our bylaws to strengthen both the volunteer leadership and transparency. <clears throat> Further, over the last two years, under Chief Scout Executives Wayne Brock and now Mike Serbaugh, we have worked to change the culture at our national headquarters to one of listening and service rather than directing and informing. We captured this effort symbolically by changing the name of the national headquarters to the National Service Center. I spoke two years ago of the need to stop the decline in membership and figure out ways to begin to grow again above all by emphasizing the recruitment of Cub Scouts. Another priority I mentioned was the need to devote more attention and resources to scout reach because kids from disadvantaged families need scouting most of all. We have the chance to change lives dramatically by giving these boys an opportunity to be scouts. I spoke of the need to renew our emphasis on building re stronger relationships in our communities and the need to be far more aggressive in recruiting Hispanic, African American, and Asian American community leaders to our boards at both the national, regional, and local levels. And finally, and with all sincerity, two years ago, I expressed strong support for the 2013 decision to welcome gay youth. But I said then that we needed to put the membership standards issue behind us and move forward. And I said I would oppose any effort to reopen the issue, acknowledging at the same time that no one could foretell what might happen in the future. And no one did predict that during the ensuing year we would be confronted with new challenges we simply could not ignore. First, several major councils openly defied the national policy with the prospect of a number of others following in their steps. As I said a year ago, while technically we had the authority to revoke their charters, such an action would immediately deny the lifelong benefits of scouting to tens of thousands of boys and young men right now and for a long time into the future. Second, more than two dozen states had prohibited discrimination in employment based on sexual orientation, and we faced a potential onslaught of legal actions in multiple states which I and others believed we could not win. Thus, scouting would find itself in the untenable position of welcoming gay youth 
being required to hire gay professionals, yet barring gay volunteer leaders. Third, we also face the very real prospect that the courts or other government entities would simply order us to change our policy, including the considerable likelihood of forbidding any kind of membership standard, including our foundational belief in our duty to God and our focus on serving the specific needs of boys. Thus, I warned at this meeting a year ago that the status quo in the movement's membership standards could not be sustained. Mindful that 70% of our scout units are sponsored by churches, the officers and entire executive board of BSA had to address these issues last summer. We collectively considered and then overwhelmingly approved a change in policy that would allow gay scout leaders to serve while still protecting the First Amendment right of our church partners to select scout leaders whose beliefs and lifestyles were compatible with those of the sponsoring church. And we have made quite clear that going forward, BSA will support and partner with any church sponsor whose right to choose its own leaders faces legal challenges. And so a difficult decision was made a decision the overwhelming preponderance of sponsoring institutions and volunteer leaders have accepted. A decision that has allowed us at long last to focus on programs, on focusing on our membership, and on reaching boys and families in need of scouting, but unaware of its benefits. Allowing us to look to the future and to better serve America and Americans. So where are we today? Most importantly, through these challenges, we have maintained our unity as a movement. Significantly, membership in recent months has begun to move in a positive direction for the first time in many years. While we have not yet returned to the plus column overall, we have gone from a membership loss of nearly 8% in 2013 to a 3.9% loss a year ago to 2.8% loss this year. What's more, the rechartering process has gone much faster than in past years, and retention rates are up. So we actually believe the chances of net positive growth through the rest of this year are quite promising. In fact, every leading indication of membership growth is positive. For the first time in many years, we saw net positive growth in Cub Scouts last fall, and we have seen growth in exploring each of the last several months. In sum, we are on the threshold of a significant historical event, a return to positive national membership growth for the first time in decades. New opportunities to grow have opened before us as public schools, communities, cities, and other government organizations have once again opened their doors for scout recruiting in schools and scout use of civic facilities. Corporations which reduced or eliminated their support for scouting and companies that never had supported us or returning to the fold or joining us for the first time. Coca-Cola, Walt Disney, Wells Fargo, Lockheed Martin, Home Depot, Coleman, Monsanto, and more. The membership policy change has created new opportunities for us in both fundraising and membership growth. But neither would matter if we didn't have exciting new programs to attract boys. And that's exactly what we've done with the Build, Event, Build an Adventure initiative and the new Cub Scout program. Let me read to you an email I received from a senior official in the United States Secret Service just a couple of weeks ago. He wrote me, I'm an assistant Cub Master and den leader for my son's pack. I can see a change in the interest level of my scouts with the new Cub Scout program. I specifically see a definite excitement from the boys because we are getting outdoors for activities while learning about subjects that can be related directly to the Scout Law. I like the idea of the Scout Law as part of the Cub Scouts. I can easily relate each of our activities to one or two parts of the Scout Law. Further, I believe kids need to get outside, away from electronic device distractions, and use all five senses to gain experience and learn. The new Cub Scout program helps me teach the fundamentals of scouting while giving me the flexibility to customize the program to the needs of my scouts and their families. 
Additionally, the new den leader materials such as the leader's guide are now very useful because the resources are for the most part in one place. As you can imagine, my job does not allow me the optimum time I would like to prepare for every meeting. But the new materials are working parent friendly, allowing me always to put on an enriching and impactful meeting. As an Eagle Scout who loves scouting and everything it gave me, I want my scouts to have the same experience as I did growing up through, from Cub Scouts through Boy Scouts. The new program helps me deliver that, program, that experience. It is clear from such responses that all those involved in developing Build an, Initi Build an Adventure and the new Cub Scout program have placed in our hands the tools needed to attract and keep boys in scouting. It is a great achievement. We're also seeing for the first time in many years absolute growth in the exploring program. And I know that Mike sees great opportunities here. And hats off to the Greater St. Louis Council for their bold initiative to create two new law enforcement explorer posts in Ferguson, Missouri. And more and more councils are looking for and implementing such programs that offer so much to communities which have so little. Our future is bright which means we have a full agenda. Before I hand over the gavel to Randall this afternoon, I want to briefly share with you three priority areas on which I think we need to focus and which are at the heart of Mike's program. First, excellence in continued program development and membership growth are joined at the hip. Second, scout reach and sustaining scout reach programs once started must be a high priority. No child of any ethnicity should be denied the scouting experience because his family is too poor or his neighborhood lacks adult role models or a sponsor. Some councils are doing very well. Some councils need to learn from them. Third, to repeat what I have said each of the last two years, we need to increase the diversity of our boards at every level. The active engagement of community leaders and local religious leaders when it comes to developing support for scouting is in fact a no-brainer. One problem we will continue to face, and Jim Turley referred to it this morning, is financial liability for past abuse cases. It is, I think, the only cloud in an otherwise bright sky for scouting, but it is real. A closing thought as I leave this post, America needs scouting. Contrary to what you hear from some politicians, we continue to live in a great country. But it will only remain great as long as Americans embrace the obligations and responsibilities of citizenship, as well as its many rights and benefits. America needs scouting to remind all of their duty to our country. America needs scouting because it teaches boys that the only self-esteem and esteem from others that is worth having must be earned. Not every Boy Scout gets a trophy. Every badge, a merit, from a merit badge to the Eagle Award itself, must be earned. And scouting doesn't grade on the curve. America needs scouting because what other organization takes boys into the wilderness to find adventure, to learn about our priceless national, natural heritage, and develop the inner strength and confidence to overcome challenges and adversity? Listen to the words of Supreme Court Justice William O. Douglas, written many years ago. If throughout time the youth of a nation accept the challenge the mountains offer, they will help keep alive in our people the spirit of adventure. That spirit is a measure of the vitality of both nations and men. A people who climb the ridges and sleep under the stars in high mountain meadows, who enter the forest and scale the peaks, who explored glaciers and walked ridges buried deep in snow. These people will give their country some of the indomitable spirit of the mountains. Douglas also wrote, discovery is adventure. Walking through the wilderness is indeed like living. The horizon drops away, bringing new sights and sounds and smells from the earth. When one moves through the forest, his sense of discovery is quickened. Man is back in the environment from which he emerged to build factories and churches and schools. He is primitive again. 
matching his wits against the earth and the sky. He is free of the restraints of society and free of its safeguards. Boys, perhaps more than men, know this experience. Boys, perhaps more than men, know this experience. Who indeed knows these things better than boys who have experienced the wilderness through scouting? Where except in scouting can a boy keep alive the American spirit of adventure, the thrill of risk and daring, the satisfaction of overcoming challenges? America needs scouting to build character and leadership skills in boys and young men. Rarely has a lack of character and lack of courageous, bold, visionary leadership been so, Ameri so apparent in America, but not in scouting. We are the country's largest and best leadership and character building factory. When someone cynically refers to a person of character with the phrase, well, he's a Boy Scout, it is in fact the highest compliment. It is who we are. Finally, America needs scouting because it needs young men for whom God is central in their lives. For scouts of all ages, duty to God is not a merit badge or a piece of metal with colored cloth. It is the foundation stone of who and what we are. Without duty to God, there is no scout oath, no scout movement. A boy who kneels before his God will stand tall as a man. I joined Cub Scouts nearly 65 years ago. In my adult life, I have never been more optimistic about the future of the Boy Scouts of America than I am today. Our challenges are finally manageable and our opportunities are limitless. We must leave this place prepared to be bold, courageous, and daring in the service of the greatest youth serving organization in the world. This is our moment. We must seize it. God bless you and God bless the Boy Scouts.